This time, I'd like to look at the current status of Kenta Maeda of the Minnesota Twins. He underwent Tommy John surgery in August of 2021 and has been sidelined since then, including the entire season of 2022. He's back this season, so let's look at what kind of pitcher Kenta Maeda is and what he can do in the future. Maeda is from Japan. He is a starting pitcher for the Minnesota Twins. He is already a veteran pitcher. I imagine he is still very young, but he is 35. He joined the MLB as a free agent in January 2016 with the Dodgers after playing for 8 years in MLB Japan. 2023 is the last year of his 8 year contract, so he will be a free agent in 2024. So, this season is significant for him to get the next good contract. Let's take a look at the pitching record. First, let's look at the NPB side. Maeda was an excellent starting pitcher in Japan. He pitched eight seasons with the Hiroshima Toyo Cup. He was 97 to 67 with a 2.39 ERA. He made his big league debut in 2016. So, this is his eighth year in MLB. He has been active in the United States for the same period as in the NPB. He s played for two teams, the Dodgers and the Twins. He has a record of 59 wins and 43 losses and a 3.88 and run average. When Japanese pitchers go to the majors, their pitching record could be worse than in the NPB. But Japanese MLB pitchers whose ERA is in the three point range as a starting pitcher are excellent. He also has experience as a reliever in the United States, right? I imagine Maeda pitching wonderfully and striking out many batters with his slider. There were also years when he managed to keep his ERA in the three point range or even the two point range. So, overall, his pitching has been excellent. Although there were some seasons with over four points. In 2017 and 2019, he won 13 games, even though his ERAs were in the four point range. It's tough to win over 10 games in a single season when the ERA is usually in the four point range. So he would have been supported by the Dodgers strong lineup. On the other hand, Maeda. Managed his ERA within two or three runs in 2016, 2018, and 2020. So, overall, Maeda is a very stable pitcher. And in 2016, his debut year, he had 16 wins, 11 losses, and 3.48 earned run average. He deserved to win the Rookie of the Year. But Maeda came in third in the voting. The winner was his teammate Corey Seager. The second place was t o r e y Turner with the Washington Nationals. So, Maeda was the number one among rookie pitchers in the National League that year. Maeda spent a magical season in 2020, the pandemic shortened season. His record was 6 1 with a 2.7 ERA. Maeda came in second in the Cy Young Award voting. The winner was Shane Bieber. Of the Cleveland Indians. This is a transition of his pitching record in the MLB and NPB. His ERA in MLB was worse than a little because MLB has a lot of excellent hitters and sluggers. In MLB, more and more home runs are hit. So even pitchers rarely hit in NPB were hit when they came to MLB. Although the number of hits can be limited to some extent, one or two of them are home runs that can make their ERA worse. It's a kind of characteristic of Japanese pitchers that their ERA deteriorates a little. The Maeda also has this tendency. Maeda's command is good, but his base on balls per nine in MLB has been worse than that of his NPB career. He should be more careful of pitching to avoid a long ball in MLB, moving the ball around the plate. On the other hand, Maeda has got more strikeouts than Japan. 
the number of home runs has been increasing in Major League Baseball, but long ball hitters are relatively likely to have many strikeouts. Mind as sharp slider and splitter could be practical for getting many strikeouts. I wanna take a look at his arsenal. Since his MLB debut in 2016 until this season, he has usually used 5 to 6 types of pitches. He's been using four seamer sliders, a curveball, a sinker, the changeup, and in the second year, he added a cutter, but he stopped the cutter soon. While the percentage of four seamer has decreased, the share of sliders has increased. The percentage of splitters has also increased, so his slider and splitter will now be the lifeline for Maeda. Both pitches help get a swing and miss strike. Their whiff percentage is also high. About velocity, his velocity is basically on par with or slightly slower than the MLB average. I need to watch how much his fastball will return after the Tommy John surgery this season. I will need to look at the influence of the Tommy John surgery. His fastball average velocities in the past two games this season were between 89.5 to 90. Considering his peak, he will be able to pitch higher fastballs. I wanna see him carefully this season. I wanna break down the pitches a little bit. Maeda mainly uses the four seamer and the sinker as a fastball. The number one share is the four seamer. Whose opponent batting average is better than the sinker, so the current choice could be the best mix in the fastball category. Alright, breaking ball category. He uses the slider and the curveball, but he s overwhelmingly uses the slider, so the slider can be his representative. It's more effective to retire batters. Alright, about the off speed ball category. Maeda has used only a splitter since 2018. His core balls could be slider and splitter, whose opponent batting average is good. He can use both pitches as a put away pitch. Okay, now I wanna summarize his condition using a SWOT analysis. About his strengths. First, he has a speed fluctuation technique to a slow and steady approach with five pitches. Second, he has five or six different pitches with which he has many options to retire. Third, he has an excellent command to arrow only a few walks. Fourth, Maeda has stamina depending on his age and right arm condition. Fifth, he has experience as a starter and reliever, which could be helpful for him to continue the pitcher's career for a longer time. Six, he should keep it in good condition if he doesn't get hurt in Tommy John surgery. Seven, he has mental power because he has the experience to establish a position in the Dodgers starting rotation. The Dodgers is a strong and traditional club. It could be tough to do so. Let's look at his weaknesses. First, as we looked, His speed were not so fast. Baseball is not a speed competition. A baseball pitcher with a high speed ball is not always a good pitcher. However, a faster ball will raise the probability of retiring batters safely. Second, about physical condition. The Minnesota Twins skipped his turn in the starting rotation after his first two outings. Due to general fatigue and、uh, soreness in the right arm. He felt okay. I think so. But just in case, his right arm might require watching. Alright, let's move to the opportunities. Some rules have changed this season. The pitch timer could be no problem for him because he has a neat pitching style. Therefore, Maeda could take more advantage than the batters he faces. Although, there has been a tendency to increase home runs in the fly ball revolution. But, as I said, long ball hitters will likely be struck out, 
so Maeda will be able to get strikeouts continuously. About our catcher, uh, Christian Vasquez entered the Twins. Vasquez has much experience as a catcher with the Red Sox and the Astros. He knows how to win and should be a helpful partner with Maeda. Alright, let's look at the threats. To this engagement in the pitch timer rule, uh, a disadvantage for pitchers because they will give more stolen bases than before. The increase in home runs could also be risky for Maeda. Alright, so to be summarized, although Maeda has some weaknesses and threats, he has much experience and skills to utilize the positive aspects, including effective arsenals. Kenta Maeda will have a solid season without physical issues, overcoming harmful elements. I hope that he will record 10 wins and lower than a 3.5 ERA this season. Okay, this time I analyzed the Minnesota Twins right-hander Kenta Maeda, who returned from Tommy John surgery. Good luck! Thank you for watching. Thank you, baseball. Tell me what I wanna hear. The real force buried deep beneath the love and fears. I'm in a muddle, lost in